Nicaragua is the second poorest country in the hemisphere after Haiti, but it is also one of the richest in resources and biodiversity in the planet. Known for its lakes, volcanoes, jungles, and rivers, Nicaragua has one of the biggest freshwater lakes in the world, the longest and deepest rivers in Central America, and the second largest forest in the continent after the Amazon. If we were to harness the energy released by the volcanoes, we could provide electricity for all of Central America. If we used all our resources in a rational and equitable way, we could be a much richer country. Unfortunately, poverty breeds ignorance and greed breeds corruption. That is also something this country has a lot of. Lake Cosibolca measures 8,000 square kilometers, has a total volume of 104 cubic kilometers, and it dumps 476,000 liters per second into the Caribbean Sea. If we use the United Nations standards of human water needs in the world, which is set between 20 and 50 liters a day per person, this lake could provide water for 13% of the world population. Many countries would love to have such an abundance of water, but ironically, we are polluting it very quickly, and it is quite possible that the next generation will inherit a sewer instead of a freshwater lake. In the 27 years I have lived in Nicaragua, I have never seen this lake as dry as it is today. It is almost two meters below its normal level, and though we are at the beginning of the rainy season, the rains haven't come. They say that this year the rainy season will start two or three weeks later, which means that crops will be bad and many poor families will go hungry. Some say that the rise in temperature that we are feeling this year and the retardation of the rainy season are partly due to global warming, but no one can say for certain. The other great natural asset we have in Nicaragua is a biosphere reserve called Bosawas. This natural reserve, located in the northern part of Nicaragua, measures 7,800 square kilometers. If we take the buffer zone into account, it measures 20,000 square kilometers. This is roughly the size of neighboring El Salvador. Bosawas is a natural lung for the whole planet, and it is the home of the Miskito and Mayagna Indians. Due to the extreme poverty in this country, the landless and destitute campesinos look at this pristine forest as a place to eke out a living. Due to bad agricultural practices, such as slashing and burning and extensive cattle ranching, these forests are gradually disappearing and the rivers are drying up. There are also the timber bands who know exactly what a mahogany or cedar tree costs in the international market, and they are depleting the forests very rapidly. In this remote area of the country, there is no law and there is no one to stop them from extracting precious timber in excessive amounts. A cubic meter of precious hardwood can fetch up to $1,500 in the international market. An average tree measures about three to five cubic meters, which is to say it can get between four to $7,500. The illegal timber barons pay the indigenous communities only $30 per tree at most. This is a lucrative business which is impoverishing the whole country. The Caribbean coast of Nicaragua encompasses 50% of the national territory, only has 10% of the population and 80% of the natural resources. It is an autonomous region which by law belongs to the indigenous people, but the settlers from the Pacific are invading it rapidly, and in the last 50 years, 50% of the forests have been cut down. The conflicts over the ownership of the land and its natural resources are growing daily, and some have ended in bloodshed. One indigenous community called La Yasiksa is an example in case. Two years ago, the community wanted to oust some mestizo settlers who were armed and did not want to leave the area and kept on logging. After repeatedly asking the government to intervene on their behalf, the Mesquitio Indians finally took the law into their own hands and two mestizos were killed. Today, this indigenous community with the help of various international agencies, such as DFID, World Bank, and WWF, have been able to certify their forest and have a very successful business, which is an example to all. They have proven that they can live off the land in a rational and sustainable way. In the Mosquitoes' worldview, no one owns land. The land belongs to the community. So all of the revenues from their certified forest 
go to improve their living standards, health and education. This is truly a beacon of hope. Slowly, people are realizing that their activities have a lot to do with climate change and wonder if the damage we have caused our habitat can be reversed. Others wonder if the planet has enough resources to sustain an ever-growing population which thrives on energy produced mainly by fossil fuels. In Nicaragua, some attempts are being made to create renewable energy, to change consumer habits and generate more awareness about global warming and its consequences. Given that a large part of the Caribbean coast is nearly at sea level, the consequences of global warming and the rising sea levels could be deadly. The question is, will we be able to change our habits and ways of living, or are we condemned to disappear due to our own ignorance and grief?